Everybody, can you guys hear me not loud and clear? Are we good to go with the sound? Is everything good? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can you hear sound you. Sound good? All right, man. Yes, sir. So, so every week I'm like, man, I miss my quarterback. But you want to know the best part about that intro video? Trayvon Diggs taking, getting that pick six, man. And, you know, it's the anniversary <laughs> of last year's game where we kind of whooped up on the Eagles. It's Eagles week, man. Who's excited? Yes. Who's excited? Of course, bro. Definitely. Absolutely. This is the – um Probably the most impactful matchup we've had since 2019, which is something that I'm looking forward to. So I'm ready to shut them mother humpers up, man. I have heard <laughs> more oh, Mark. crap from them. Oh my! Oh yeah, God. same here. For you know, forever seems. You know, first it was the Giants and Washington and all that. Those guys have gone silent, and and I'm hoping that come Sunday we end up showing the Eagles that they're not as good as they think they are. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So, yeah. So, if in, if everybody doesn't know who everybody is, we got Brandon from Frankly Football. We got Space Cowboy Media. And we got none other than the legend, the godfather, Mark Holmes from the Joe Blue Sports Report. <laughs> he always does that, man. Yeah. <laughs> he always does that. Yeah, man. So, uh, we're going to start today by, you know, I did not do a recap show. But before we get into the Philadelphia Eagles, we're going to talk about the Rams game. All right, so uh, we're going to give our pros and cons of the Rams game, and I'll start with Brandon. What are your pros from what happened in that game? I See, I'm a 90s baby. I was born in 91. Um, many people would, say, would talk about this 92 defense. You know, Mark, you know, you, you may be a guy that would talk about the doomsday defense in 92. I was not conscious The enough. original one. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I was not conscious enough to witness – a defense as oppressive as this d- during my days as a Cowboys fan. Mm-hmm. This defense is is something else, man. We we of course we may talk about ones from other teams, but Jesus Christ, man, um, this this is a defense that is something special from every level, from the front to the linebacker core to the the secondary. They are uh, attacking at each level like a, a well-oiled machine and working together like like a symphony and it's a beautiful thing to witness so this defense is is wonderful i think that the coaching staff they're they're adjusting their scheme each week they're learning from their mistakes and i like i like to see that i think that you know the the offense is is definitely improving and that's something that i like to see as well i love to see a coaching staff that learns but I, I cannot speak enough. I cannot hawk enough praises on this defense. I'll say I'll save enough for the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as I'm talking to you guys, my sister just walked in here, dropped the kids off. She's an Eagles fan, so you know oh, that must have been an old man. She must have heard me talking about him. Man, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, space man, uh, what were your pros from the game? Um, I would say that your running attack did its job as it should. I think that uh, for me, I kind of see what the dynamic is supposed to be here. Uh, Zeke is going to be your ground and pound stop. Like a good way of looking at it would be like what I would envision Felix Jones and Marion Barber of like when I was younger. That's kind of what yeah. I'm kind of seeing now. Like, and that's no like. Uh, I mean, I understand that Zeke. They're kind of managing his carries. So, like for those that are like saying, "Well, look at his numbers," it's like it's hard because they're purposely not giving him the ball. But he had like three chances to break away a big run. And the main thing mm-hmm. is, is that he kept turning out those dirty yards that I I like to call it because you're churning clock the ball consistently and most importantly you're taking the time for your defense to rest which i think is going to be the winning formula for the team moving forward when you reinsert a dak prescott or if you keep cooper rush in at quarterback uh until he's ready to go uh another thing that was a big positive for me was that the i saw a little bit better play from the linebackers too anthony barr had a really good game that i saw last time and i mean I, I, I mean, I'm going to just be honest with you. We should have pitched a shutout that game. We dominated the game straight up, and that's no homerism. Really, mm-hmm. if it wasn't for the two big plays, it's 22 to nothing. So I think that you have a lot of good there. Um, but, yeah, I'll you know stop there. <laughs> well, for me, I'm going to say 38-163, which is the opposite of what happened to us against the 49ers. Um 
for us against the 49ers in the playoffs, we rushed for 77 yards and gave up 163. Um, you can't win giving up the run and not stopping the run. And to see them doing what they did was incredible. And see, everybody keeps going through, and, and Space, you touched on it there, um, about Zeke Elliott you know, getting the dirty yards, as you put it. I almost look at it as you are basically doing the body blows with Zeke Elliott. He's in there pounding the rock and stuff, and you're getting now the defensive front that's kind of playing in that space where they're only two, three yards, and they're getting offensive line leaned on it. Then you start hitting him with the speed. Now, after I've been pounded on now i've got to sprint and try and catch this fast guy and see if you look at because i am old um i hate to talk about the washington commanders but back in the day they had john riggins who was that bruising back and then they had uh joe washington who was the speed third down back and between the two of them they're getting tons and tons of yards um and if you put the two of them together if you think about back in the day with emmett smith when the cowboys rushed for 100 yards with emmett smith it was almost like butter. We almost always won. When we didn't get that 100 yards with, with, with Emmett Smith, we lost. More times than not. The other thing is DMV taught me something years ago. And his thing was when you control the middle of the field, you control the field. And that is, of course, my thing has always been the defensive line. You can have great edge rushers, but if you're soft in the middle, that quarterback's going to step up, he's going to get a clear view of the field, or he's going to take off and burn you. That is where the quarterbacks are not escaping. They don't have that clear view of the field. Yeah. They're having actually lane rush integrity, so there's no place for them to get in. And it's just like the uh, in Star Wars. It's the trash compactor coming against you, and there's no place to go. Yeah, not to mention the thing about the middle of the field, too, is that the safeties uh, control the middle of the field as well. And we're not giving up as many seam routes, uh, you know, as many slants, mm -hmm. crossing routes and things like that. We've done a great job communicating on the back end as well. So I think that, you know, that'll be one of my pros, honestly, um, is the fact that the back end seems like they're in sync. Even with Trayvon Diggs giving up that one big play, it still seems like everybody was in the position they were supposed to. And if that ball is maybe an inch off, he might be going to the house. It was that mm -hmm. it was that good of a throw. It was that good yeah. of a throw, that good of a catch. Go ahead, Space. The, yeah, the two so like this is a thing that I've been seeing some Eagles fans, especially a certain one uh prominent YouTuber, <laughs> wanting to point out the two plays. If you go going back to the the Cooper Cup touchdown, if Matt Stafford throws that ball a little bit behind him. It was like it had to be a perfect ball. If not, mm -hmm. that's going to the house. The other one was perfect coverage. I mean, it's cover like anybody that knows basic coverages will know that Trayvon did a really good he job right there. there. It's just yes. I mean, he was right. Like literally he was like in like not even fingertips reach of batting that thing down. So I kind of find it hilarious that people look at that and be like, oh well he's terrible. No, it was literally it took two perfect plays for them to get just 10 points. And the thing about that first uh, that first touchdown, it was the definition of a perfect pass. Trevon got a a forearm on that ball, mm -hmm. um, and it still managed to go into the bread basket. Yeah, and yeah. without without the help of his chin strap, <laughs> it would have been bobbled out. So mm -hmm. some things you just gotta chalk up to the the perfect pass, you know. Um, so if you you cannot discount coverage there, um, Diggs put put valiant effort into coverage there. Um, but just like you said, DMV, you know, the, the secondary, the, 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 the safeties have been working in ex excellently in tandem with, with these, uh, with these corners, they've been coming down um, and these guys trust each other and you can, you can definitely see. It. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll start with some cons, you know, um, I'll actually start with some of my cons and then I'll, you know, go around the table um, I think that one of my cons was the play calling, um, as, 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 as always, I probably took somebody's, but at, at a certain time, it just seemed like Kellen was just calling plays. It didn't seem like he was setting up anything for any rhyme or reason. Mm -hmm. One play we go empty one, one play we go in, in a whole different formation. It just seems like he was just calling plays for formations for no odd rhyme or reason he wasn't setting anything up and you know the offense kind of struggled at times sometimes he sometimes he went empty for no odd reason you know when we knew that we just needed to run the ball i think at one point mike mccarthy probably said all right man let's run the damn ball 
Mm-hmm. And he's like, okay, you want to run the ball? We ran the ball about five straight times, and we ran it right down the Rams' throat. So, um, really, I would just say my major con was the was the play calling. And uh, I would say uh, we had a couple drop balls in that game that I think changed the game. Uh, one by Gallup uh, and one by CeeDee Lamb. Uh, CeeDee Lamb where, you know, the defender kind of ripped it out, but I think that if you're going to be a number one receiver and say you're a number one receiver, those are the simple plays you got to make, that comeback route on the sideline. Um, those two plays, I think, you know, probably take Cooper Rush's 106 yards to maybe 150 yards. It might not look as bad, but maybe we're looking at 30 to 10 opposed to, you know, the 22. So I, I, I'll leave it to Mark. What, what are your con? Well, you, you got me on the play calling because, you you know, when we were sitting there and we're looking at an empty backfield, it's like, if, okay, for me, it's kind of like that. You know I'm the 12 personnel guy, okay, all right? Yeah. But it's it's personal to me it's with 12 personnel because you can do so many things. I know that's not you young guys, that the 12 personnel and stuff. That's old school football. But from 12 personnel, you can run, you can pass, you can do anything. If you've got empty backfield, I love that as a defensive lineman because that means I can pin my – years back i'm coming for your ass i don't have to worry about a run play and with this offense i'm kind of like you want to make sure that we have put a doubt in people's minds i'm still kind of worried about our left guard situation um connor mcgovern has been you know or actually the whole left guard position has been grading the worst on the offensive line um jason peters i had hoped that he was going to be able to kind of step in and stuff but now he's got the chest injury and things but that is the achilles heel of the offensive line it's hard to find a lot of things in this game to say i didn't like this i didn't like that the defense is playing stellar right now um dan quinn you can see why he came back because he knew he was going to have a loaded defense and by being here with this defense he can write his ticket to any place that he wants to go okay uh space <laughs> now if you know me in cowboy land you know i like to be well, i like to be labeled as mr pessimist but That's you. As, <laughs> yep <laughs> but i try to be as analytical as possible because you know what there are things that we got to fix so that we have a perfect outing and a couple things um the offensive play calling I, you know just to skim over that i felt like the ebb and flow of the game. It wasn't really until the end of the game where I felt like, okay, you're doing the right thing here. It just felt all over the place. Drops are another big thing. You really could have blew the door open mm-hmm. on this game early. The Gallup, um, the Gallup drop. Now someone told me about like apparently like the um, the Rams defensive coordinator was wearing white, so it kind of like affected. Like, I don't know the validity of that, but point being is that you had a touchdown there and he dropped it, which isn't good. CD still dropped that pass. I mean. Okay, but aside from that, um, a couple other things were um, the the punts. Like I've been noticing that anger uh, has now had two whiffs in the past two games. Now again, it's just two whiffs, but like I don't want to start seeing a trend here. Mm -hmm. Like I really don't because he was one of the reasons why you won a lot of games last year because of field position. That's super Mm -hmm. important, especially with this defense you got going on here. Now, um. The long snapper had the big uh, goof at the beginning of the game, but he was fine. Uh, but that's something I'm keeping an eye out on because the last thing I want to deal with is having a long snapper issue moving forward. Maybe LP can come out of retirement and come back. Yeah, um, I'm just trying to think. Um, defensively, I don't think – well, a couple of times here and there, but it wasn't like I'm killing them for it. It's just like sometimes – they were being held the entire time, so I'm not going to bitch and complain. I'm just going to be real mm-hmm. with you. Like, they, they missed so many holding calls, and the Cowboys really could have had, like, 10 sacks in this game. So, I mean, that's pretty much all my cons there, but they're things that you can correct. So, <laughs> All right, and Brandon, your cons? Um, I have to raise a question. Does it seem like they're forcing Dalton Schultz on Cooper Rush? Dak Prescott has the relationship with Dalton Schultz. We we cannot deny that. But we don't know how Cooper Rush's relationship is with Dalton Schultz as opposed to Peyton Hendershot or uh, Jake Ferguson. Um, Dalton Schultz also has the uh, PCL, mm-hmm. I believe. Um, he really aggravated it again. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Um, and having him in may be to the team's detriment. 
in mm. an already struggling offense, which the is point. tied for 31st mm -hmm. in getting to the red zone. We're tied with Pittsburgh, who has a struggling, a struggling mightily mm -hmm. Kenny Pickett. Um, only Houston is worse than both of us. Now, that is where I think things are starting to, to look a little shaky in the light, you know? Um, maybe Dalton and Dak need to come back around the same time because those are the guys who, who come skipping down the yellow brick road with their hands held, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, we, we have a, a Zeke in 2021 situation. Mm -hmm. Where he sh he's forced down the fans' throat to to the team's detriment. Mm -hmm. um, also, yes, I do think we did have a a bit of a play calling debacle um, that, to a certain extent, got fixed. You know, Mike McCarthy took Kellen and set him on his knee and burped him and told him, "Hey, youngster, run the ball." Um, and w at which point, you know, we saw that Zeke got his. 22 touches and Tony got, I believe it's eight or nine, mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in which we got that blend of thunder and lightning that we just love so much. It's like an, an excellently blended sauce, you know, that just comes together so well. Um, but offensively, I think that there are things that we, that's left to be desired. Um, play wise that at the moment, can't be solved um, until we, we get some help back on the field in the form of the guy that wears number four. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I, I thought you, you brought up a very good point about Schultz. And I had a theory that I thought Noah Brown was playing a little bit of split wide for us. And that's why he was able to, you know, attack the certain areas of the field that Schultz would have been attacking, the areas that, you know, you know, Witten would have been in the system and all of that type of stuff. I there was no Noah Brown in this game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was there was none, and 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 it and, and it kind of answered what I thought, which is Schultz was back, and we didn't see any Noah Brown. Yeah, and I want to add to this. I think a big thing, and I said this in the off season last year, was that when teams were playing us a certain way, the way that Schultz accrued a lot of his yardage, if you actually go back and look at the film, was because teams were daring us to throw to him, mm -hmm. and so. If you know me, I'm not a fan of paying my tight ends unless they're like that elite, high caliber type of guy. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, and you could tell, listen, we know in Dallas that money gets on the field, right? That's why you're having a situation like we had last year with Zeke. That's why you're having the situation. Well, not necessarily, but you know, you got the quarterback, this, that, and a third. I know that's not congruent, but point being is like money gets on the field. But I think the Joneses really don't want to pay Dalton. And I love the two tight ends that we have here. And I think that that is going to be the coup de grace when it comes to this. Because for me, what I'm worried about is how – and we'll talk about this later when we get to Philly, but I want to stress this point now. I'm worried that when you reinsert a Dak Prescott into this offense, you're going to throw this thing out of whack because you're going to – because Kellen likes to get arrogant sometimes. He, You know, he said he loves to pass the ball, mm -hmm. you know, and the – thing that's gonna and that's why i'm kind of holding off even though we're four and one i'm, I'm happy about that and even if we're five and one and, and dak doesn't play this game if we go back to this whatever the hell we were trying to do at the beginning of the season i'm gonna be very upset because i'm like guys yeah. we th I, I don't want to see anything else that's not working like i'm okay with him passing the ball if it works you know i'm mr pass it on first down but like guys like we gotta like stick to what's working so like Please, Kellen, don't <laughs> don't don't mess it up there. Well, what kind of gives me hope about that space is that when Dak did an interview, he spoke more about be uh, fitting into the the well oiled machine, right? Mm -hmm. Rather exactly. than coming in and taking over the offense, and that that gave me more hope. Absolutely. Yeah, Mark, we talked about this earlier, and I want you to, you know, kind of reiterate what, what, we, what we talked about with Tony Romo and when we were forced. Oh, yeah. Into, yeah, when we were. Well, this, this is my hope because, you know, because when you go to the Tampa Bay game, you felt like Kellen Moore was scared and that we were outmatched and we had to go ahead and do the trick plays. When you do trick plays, it's because you don't think that you can beat them straight up. 
You understand? You know what I mean? Mm. If you're gonna yeah. fight somebody, and you know you can kick their ass. You're gonna go ahead and just hit them. Like, boom, boom. I'm not gonna go ahead and try and sucker punch you or something like that because I know I can kick your ass right ahead. And so to me, it was like that game. He was scared, and that's why you're sitting there, you know, doing these double reverses and bullshit ass plays that are losing yards. So we looked at 2013. 2013, Tony Romo threw for a team record 4,903 yards, 28 TDs, and 19 interceptions. Why? Because our defense was terrible. You know, we had a 31st or 32nd rated defense. The defense got a little bit better, but if you'll remember the season opener in 2014 against the San Francisco 49ers, he threw three interceptions, and it didn't look like he could throw 25 yards down the field. And because of that, they kind of said, we got to let Tony get healthy. We got to run the football. And we started running to Marco Murray, and all of a sudden we realized, oh, this is protecting our defense because it's keeping him off the field, and it's also making it better for Tony Romo. That year, Tony Romo only throws for 3,800 yards, but throws for three more touchdowns and only nine interceptions. Statistically, it was the best year that he had. And had it not been for that injury, they probably would have been doing things the same way where we're just going to be chucking it up. And when you think about last year, when Michael Gallup came back the, you know, um, from the injury, the first half of the season when we really didn't have Michael Gallup, that was the golden time of the offense. We had CD, we had Amari Cooper. And it felt like once we got Michael Gallup back, it's like, oh, we got three great receivers, so we got to use them. We stopped using really 12 personnel. We stopped running the ball as much, and we kept chucking the football. And that ended up seemingly being part of the problem for the team. And this is, again, like you just brought up, with – Dak coming back, now you start thinking, well, we're paying the guy $40 million, so he's got to have 300-yard games. We don't want to have, you know, 200-yard games and one TDs because we got to justify the cost on that. But winning football, sometimes it's not great for fantasy football. It's not beautiful. It's Glad winning the that. game, you know? Mm -hmm. You look at teams like the Baltimore Ravens, ugly-ass football, but you know what? They were winning Super Bowls. And this team is more like the Seattle Seahawks when they won their Super Bowl. Russell Wilson, 23 touchdown passes. Beast Mode, 1,390 yards, right? And number one defense. Ain't nothing wrong with that. And that's what Kellen Moore has to get in his head, that you play the game of field position. You've got a defense that you can rely on. Your special teams, for the most part, are doing their job. You don't have to try and be lights out every single drive. Right. And, and I, sorry, I just wanted to add to that point real quick because that's that's an important thing because in that stretch of time, going back to with Romo, was that um, you had a guy in Jason Garrett that really was like, we want to – kind of go through with the pass and we weren't really thinking about running the football i mean mm -hmm. i think it was a no to 20 so i think 2012 like romo threw like 19 interceptions that's when he had like i think that's when he had the four like near 5,000 passing yards 2013 yeah, that was 2013 was a, yeah, yeah 2013 um so like 2012 was one year it was like okay you're trying to you're trying to carry the team 2013 it was one of those situations where it's like you kind of start seeing the team try to do that but it's still like and i saw an article on this and this is why i'm so like adamant about don't go back to what we were doing before because literally we have shown we can win games without having to rely on the arm of the quarterback and it's winning you games i do not care what the stats say i just care about can we win games so i think it's uh that's a really good point you brought up mark so i think mm -hmm. that um i wanted to just uh reverberate that appreciate that mm -hmm. yeah and, and then mark given his beautiful soliloquy we have my guy, Mr. Rome, in the building. What's going on, Rome? How you doing, Hello, Rome? Man? How you doing, bro? I'm good. What's good with y'all? Yeah, man, we were just talking about the pros and cons of the Rams game, but you came in at the right time, bro, because now we get to talk about these sorry, these sorry-ass Eagles. <laughs> I'm sick of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> these sorry-ass Eagles, man. Uh, you've been fighting them all day, man. How's it been? How's it been? How's it been fighting that battle? Any, anybody really been coming back at you? Because it looks like you just been whooping ass all day. Well, I don't see. That's the, that's the beauty of what I do. I don't really look for interaction. I just say what I say and move on with my day. So I get a lot of people coming back at me, but I don't really pay no mind. I don't know if you notice. I don't respond unless I feel like it. <laughs> yeah. So I'll say something. Like 35 <laughs> people will say something to me and tell me I'm stupid, and I'll be washing my daughter up or, you know, helping with homework. I don't be caring. Like, they, they, don't, they don't move my day. <laughs> it's not that serious. 
They let the birds talk. I yeah. know they get mad when I come out and say, you know, I respect their running back one, and you know, <laughs> you know, and they know what I'm talking about, so they get their feelings. I, I I don't even got to say the dude name. You know, I, I I asked earlier. I said, I wonder if he gonna get the 20 touchdowns this year. Everybody got their feelings. It ain't my fault. I'm just asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> Is he going to get the 20? I'm just wondering. And they getting all mad at me. And I'm just, you know, because I'm, I'm looking at Cooper Rush with four touchdowns. I'm looking at the other guy with four touchdowns. And I'm just like, look, I thought we was running into a juggernaut on Sunday. Mm. Everybody want to tell me. <laughs> everybody want to tell me that, you know, we didn't need to score. And, you know, we took our foot off the gas and all this extra stuff. And, you know, y'all fraudulent because y'all beat the two Super Bowl participants. But we beat the Commanders and the Vikings. And, I, and I'm just one. I was like, when did Kirk Cousins And the Lions. Oh, don't, don't forget the Jags. Jaguars. Remember, oh, this one actually told me, what do you mean we didn't play anybody? We beat the Jags and they were leading their division. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, the fuck are you talking about? Remember, they didn't play no ordinary Vikings. They played the primetime prime Vikings. Time right, Kirk, Kirk Cousins. Cousins bro. <laughs> the primetime prime Vikings. Time, like, when, you, when, when is the murderous row of Jared Goff, Kirk Cousins, <laughs> um, Trevor Lawrence, Arthur Wentz, Trevor Lawrence, and well, I, I, Jared I'll Goff. Kyler Murray credit. You know, but when, when, when did they become murderous row? But we're supposed to look at Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford, and um, Joe, Joe Burrow, Burrow. is like they, they don't exist. The same Joe Burrow that, that, that walks on water and cleats from what I've been hearing for the last year until we beat him, and now all of a sudden he's not that important. Not only he that, but hold, look at some of the he receivers we've, we've faced. You know, Barkley is having a great year right now, and I believe they're 4-0. Right. And, oh, and you know, we're talking about uh, Jamar Chase. We're talking about uh, Mike Evans. Chris Godwin was there. Julio Jones, we broke him up. But, you know, it's not like we've been dealing with nobodies, even Scary I'm Terry. Prefer, I'm preferring them to, like, I'm, I'm, I'm egging them on, and I want them to come in with that false bravado. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want them to come into the game <clears throat> feeling like, oh, the Cowboys ain't really playing nobody. This is, this is walking apart. Oh, like last year. Last year when we whooped that ass. And yeah, three. I would love it. So, yes. you know, I know because what, what they thinking is this. They're saying, listen, in their mind, in their mind, they're like, Cowboys can't keep up with our passing game. Oh, how the tables are turned. <laughs> oh, how the turntables. Uh, Wait, yeah. you know, usually it's they're going to be punching us in the mouth because they got the defense and we're going to outpass them. And usually that's that's our angle. Mm-hmm. But it's fun being on this side. I'm glad that they're rolling into the game thinking that they're going to throw up their first 35-point game this year, 40-point game. Oh, no, they had one week one. They can't do it again. But <laughs> um, I, I'm glad that they're going to be coming in with that bravado. And that's fine because that is what when they wake up in the middle of the third quarter with a fight on their hands, we're not gonna be confused because we've been we've been we've been going twelve rounds all year. That's our style of football. Mm-hmm. It's just they're rolling into this game the same way. I hate to say it, we rolled in the San Fran. I was just mm-hmm. yep. We and rolled in the San Fran, and we was like, I ain't worried about no run game and no defense. Now, now we woke up in the third quarter like, oh, that's that's yeah. what that do. So you're okay. saying. <laughs> You're saying that we can't handle their passing attack. You're talking about the same passing attack that is led by Jalen Hurts, the same guy that has the same amount of passing touchdowns as Cooper Rush? Yeah. I wanted to clear up any confusion. Oh, okay. I don't even think that they have bad – it's not that the, I think their players are overrated or fake. No, no. It's that our players are, 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 are <clears throat> battle-tested at this point. Like, look, A.J. Brown's a great receiver, and so is – um. What's it, what's it, uh, Devontae Smith? Yeah. I'm sorry. When I roll out there against Mike Evans, Jamar Chase, Higgins, like Cooper when I when I cut Cooper Cup, when I face these receivers, I'm sorry that I'm not like, oh, what are we going to do when I see AJ? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it already. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, and I think the big thing, and this is kind of to go in with everybody's points all together. This Eagles team has not had adversity. And I'm saying that as an NFL yeah. fan. I mm-hmm. want to make that emphatically clear. Yes, Philadelphia does have a good squad on their hands. I'm not going to front there. However, this is an interesting stat that you guys should be aware of. Or, uh, really, two things, okay? So, thanks to Professor O, Matt Owen on Twitter. Nice. 
The Eagles scoring per quarter is one of the most extreme ranges you'll ever find, okay? Mm -hmm. The first quarter, 2.8 points, 21st in the league. The second quarter, they lead the league with 18.4 points. The third quarter, 3.4 points, uh, 19th. And in the fourth quarter when it matters, and I'm going to get to this next one in just a second, 2.4 points, 29th in the league. Now, people will be like, oh, Space Cowboy, you know, we're beating the shit out of these teams, so we don't need to try. Well, here's the problem. The problem is, and I've seen this with our team, is that when you get punched in the mouth and you don't know how to respond after you start getting that first uh, set of blood, that's where you kind of get thrown into a loop because when you look at the Cowboys, they've already been battle-tested aside from the first game. We all know what happened. Uh, the Bengals game, okay, you punched first, then you got punched back, you win the game, you 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 know pulled that out. Mm-hmm. Um, the Giants game, that game really felt like whoever scored the first touchdown was going to win the game. The Giants scored the first touchdown, and like you get that feeling, like, gosh, oh, shit. So we go and we score, and not only that, we go on to dominate the rest of the game. Uh, the Rams game, I mean, we straight up cooked them and the Commanders, but the point is, is we had mo- – well, actually with the – the Rams game, that Cooper Cup touchdown had that same feeling, but then it was like you go down the field, you score a touchdown, and all is good. And that is something I have not seen from Philadelphia yet. You look at their last game versus Arizona, they score the 14 points, and then they just score six points for the rest of the game, mm-hmm. and I'm supposed to be impressed by that. And, again, like that's no fault. I like Jalen Hurts. I think he's a great uh, guy. I do think, though, he's still – has to show me a little bit more if you want to get – I mean, I could give a shit less pay the guy. Like, I'm cool with whatever. But another fun thing, I'm not sure if you guys saw the numbers when – and this is where I think you're going to win the game here. And my fundamental belief, you got to make Jalen Hurts try to beat you as a passer. Shut down the Eagles run game. And I don't mean to, you know, skip ahead or anything like that. Run game. But listen, <laughs> when Jalen Hurts isn't blitzed, he's got – like almost 10 yards per attempt. He's completing 73 of his passes, this, that, and a third, right? When he's blitzed, he's only co- he is 31st in the league, only completing 5.8 yards per attempt. He has 58% of his passes completed, which is 25th. And he doesn't have any, like, big-time throws in that span, of whatever the hell that means. But, like, it, it's just – what that tells me is that I, I am begging the Eagles passing attack to try and beat me with – and. If they do, congratulations, but that's where I think the game's gonna be won there. I'm sorry if 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 listen, listen. I just cannot allow them to I know the media's on the Eagles, stay on them. I know yeah. everybody wants to give them a lot of credit and cool. I am not going to allow people to spin this narrative and really think that I'm supposed to be afraid. I'm glad that they got good receivers now. Congrats. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm glad that Jalen. I'm look. I'm glad that Jalen Hurts yeah. can pass now a little bit. Congrats. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not going to be more fearful rolling in the Philly than I was rolling in the Tampa. Like yeah, I'm bro. sorry. I don't want your bag in there. I wasn't bro. scared when we was playing the goat. I wasn't scared when we was playing Joe Burrow and the. the, the You're Russell. absolutely mm-hmm. right. I was not scared. You're right. Yeah. So I'm not going to be like, oh snap. I wonder what kind of offensive they're gonna throw a whole bunch of wide receiver screens out there and crossing patterns. And I'm not even an X's and O's guy, and I see it. Cold That's Cowboys. all they got for you. They got wide receiver, mm-hmm. wide receiver screens and crossing patterns. He don't even like throwing up the seams. If you want to keep it real, it's not that difficult. It's it's we're gonna spread y'all out. We're gonna either throw a wide receiver screen, and then when you allow Jalen Hurst to have a running lane, he's going to take advantage of it. The difference is they ain't seen this type of defensive speed. No, they sir. Close. And here's the crazy thing. Last year, last year, we did a very good job of keeping him in the pocket. The guys mm-hmm. on the interior did a very good job of holding up. We're much better on the interior now. Guys like Micah. Micah was tearing their ass up. They couldn't do that RPO stuff that they right. wanted to do. Now, I'm going to tell they you what's going to mess him up, though. I'm going to tell you what they, what's going to mess him up. The Eagles' run defense is trash. I don't know if y'all have noticed it. I know they got yes. – um, It is. It's bad. I know they got big man with um, Jordan Davis. He's good for two know. plays. And, and, you know, he a huge guy, and he, he is, he's probably going to turn into an amazing player. He got a lot to learn because it's not as simple as I'm just bigger than everybody. But, look, their defense is susceptible to the run, and that's our strength, period, point blank. We're going to take the air out of the football. We're going to play time of possession. We're going to piss them off. And Jalen Hurts is going to have to do the first the, for the first time this year. He's going to have to clutch and 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 
press because he's going to start to realize my opportunities are few and far between. They're not going to let me get the ball. That's what we're going to do. If that, unless we wake up tomorrow and the whole thing flips on his head because we get news that Dak is going to play, we got we about to play ball control. It is, and we're going to play opportunistic mm-hmm. passing game. And we, we've seen we've seen situations where we um, going back to what you said, Rome, about forcing Jalen Hurts to beat us with the pass. We've seen Not situations. Here, yeah. <laughs> Not, Not here, Bobby. We, yeah. Come on now. We eating fried eagle wings on Sunday, dude. Um, <laughs> they smile. I wish they throw um I wish I know he ain't ready, but I yeah. wish they throw um um boss man out there on um Devontae Smith so he can have flashbacks and when he got locked down. Go <laughs> 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 um, going back to what I was saying, man. He don't know how to do nothing else. <laughs> there there were we've seen situations where Jalen Hurts had to try and beat us with his arm. He yeah. he's Trayvon Diggs flashbacks is what he's going to get flashbacks. Of. Now, I will, yeah. give, I, I will give you this, though. He is a better passer this year. He's actually put in, yeah. put in the work. Yeah. He is a better That's player than he was last year. But oh, here, yeah, for sure. Here's my for thing, sure. though. Yeah. Now, now, I'm looking at this. Um, you know, everybody's trashing the Rams. When the Cowboys beat you, there's something wrong with you. You know, now everybody's talking about how bad the Rams are. Matthew Stafford ain't right and this, that, and the other, right? Although, you look at what the Rams had to face. You know, they've played good teams. I mean, they played Buffalo. They played the 49ers. Um, of course, us. You know, they've gone through the gauntlet. You know, the teams that they played star 15 and 10. You look at the Eagles, it's the reverse of that. 10 versus 15, you know, wins versus losses. And I'm sorry, you know, when you hear all the talking heads talking about how the Eagles are blowing people out, how are you telling me that they blew out the Jaguars 29-21 and you got five takeaways and you only got 29 points? That's a blowout? Yeah. And I understand, I, I understand that, that you, you know, I understand that, that it was garbage time for the Lions, but you still gave up 35 to the Lions that couldn't score a point against New England. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just kind of like, you know, I, I, you know I, I get it. You got five wins. Congratulations. That's a great thing. That's a tough beat. You play the teams that are in front of you. But you haven't really been tested. The fact that the Arizona Cardinals could have won that game are we saying the Arizona Cardinals are a great team? They lucky Kyler Murray missed that damn throw. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, it wasn't like you know you blew them out. You got lucky to be. We went on the road to the defending Super Bowl champions' house, and here it is. NFL uh, NFL.com's got the Cowboys still behind Cincinnati in the rankings. Yeah, and that's kind of my. I, I actually I like that I like the fact that we don't you know we've got our guys got a chip on the block and like Dak said keep talking but you know you get into this mentality and I'm thinking that the Eagles are beginning to start believing the hype I mean we five and one you know we we blowing people out they and stuff be five and one they about to be I'm sorry five and zero oh. okay was that a free that <laughs> was that you talking Stu over there Playboy <laughs> Mark got a thirty second ranked defense yeah. And y'all, and y'all supposed to just run through our defense. Y'all couldn't run through the right. 30 second ring defense. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's now, the, the big thing for me, too, is that, like, this is a big. Now, I'm just looking at this as real as possible, right? This is a big game for both teams. I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Listen, yeah. Philadelphia knows that this is a big game because they can't afford to have a tiebreaker go up against, you know, because the Cowboys already got two wins in the division. If Dallas gets three wins in the division in their back pocket, we don't have to play these guys until later, until mm-hmm. December, until like. Christmas, which is important because think about it. If which, from what I understand, uh, until we'll find out tomorrow. But for me, I want Dak to be fully healthy before we get him back in. I I just am like keep Cooper rushing until I know for a fact that Dak will be a okay, and I'm not gonna have to throw him out there because we did the same mistake back in um 2019 uh, where we played a hurt Dak with the shoulder thing. I think it was like the AC joint, but that's besides the point. But you have a team. It's a five and a half point favorite at home. Congratulations, that's cool. Um, so you're expected to win this game. On top of that, we have a backup quarterback, a bunch of hurt guys, whatever. Okay, so you're expected to be as cool. Um, you got a nice first punch. Okay, cool. So we're expecting to see that. So here's my thing, right? Going into this game, I'm expecting Philadelphia to try and do something early. And so my question would be next is okay. So then what's going to happen after that? Because for me, I see Philly give a, a first good punch, and then it's just like. Yeah, but like for Dallas, they have done a great job at starting off these games. We'll see if that continues in Philadelphia, which, by the way, historically Dallas has done 
well in Philadelphia over the past mm-hmm. decade. So that's another important thing to keep in mind. But look, man, like, you know, even if, right, I want you to think about this. Even if Philadelphia goes out and wins on Sunday, guess what? We're still in October. Super Bowls are not won in October, people, regardless if that's for us or for Philadelphia. So for me, I, and I'm not trying to say this to just downplay this game because, listen, I want to kick their ass as much as the Eagles want to kick our ass. No worries. But for me, it's about setting the tone and having that statement win because I've seen the same script before. 2014, we were 4-1. People were doubting us as a legit team until we went into Seattle and took care of business. 2016, okay, people were 4-1. and one. They think we're pretended, blah, blah, blah. We go into uh, Green Bay and we beat them. It's the same thing again. Now it's a matter of us being a defensive team now, which I think. But I really do believe that if you win this game as Dallas, I think that for me, getting to five and three by the bye week was awesome. I mean, with Dak out, I thought we were going to go like one seven. But, um, <laughs> but, um, the fact of the matter is, is that Dallas, this is their hardest part of their schedule, guys. And I think that when you look at how the schedule opens up later down the line, it can really bode well for seeding, which if they win this game on Sunday, that's a really good uh, position to be in. And even if Philly wins this game, what? You're 4-2 and two when people didn't expect you to be. And you're still in, uh, in – what's the word I look for? You're still in line to get to the playoffs. And I think that what matters is we play fundamentally sound football regardless of the result because, again, we're not expected to win. But, mm-hmm. hey, you know what? We're playing with house money, so I don't care. <laughs> Can I add a point? Sure. <clears throat> you know what it would be? Look, Philly has a great home field. They have fans that are rabid. They feel good about their team and all of that. But you would be nervous if you were rolling into that house with rookies or people that have not been to Philly. Mm -hmm. This is a team that has a lot of veterans that have played in Philly in big games. This ain't nothing but a routine. We've done this before. We've had Philly filling themselves. We've been up there. Our our coaching staff has been up there. This isn't a thing where we're like, we don't know quite how this is going to go because we're not used to this type of a rabid fan base. We just rolled into the Rams' house and dropped them off. You know what I'm saying? We about to roll into Philly. They going to be, I know, on eight Philly stuff, throwing stuff at the bus and all the stuff that, that comes with it. But we've seen this before. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's one of those things where you remember that – I hate to downplay our own team, but you remember remember the Hot Boys era? Oh please! Don't don't uh, ever uh, say hot boys again. Say, don't, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, don't don't man, you you, you gonna piss me off, man. Hot, hot boy, we the hot boys, yeah. man. Screw that shit. <laughs> Giving yourself your, your own nickname and you ain't really done nothing yet. There's a quiet quiet confidence about this team because if you heard Micah after that game, he's like, we gonna work hard. Like that's the main thing they keep talking about. Whenever you talk to a lot of the young players on this team, it's about the grind. You know, and I feel like the leadership that's in place, because we already know Dak's a great leader. But Mike is really coming there, and it's it's 1A, 1B. Mm, You know what I'm saying? Micah has his team focused. He has that defense focused. And I feel like our coaching staff is very, very vastly underrated. I know y'all don't Mm -hmm. like money, Mike. That's what I've been calling him. Oh, I love Mike. Mike's my guy. Yeah, Mike's <laughs> turning things around. Can, can I answer one comment in here? Yeah, Bobby Murphy said, dude, Rams lost OG, o- Odell Beckham, Robert Woods, and Von Miller. They're not the same team as last year. I'm going to counter that with we've lost our quarterback, our starting left tackle. We lost Amari Cooper, right? We lost Randy Gregory. We ended up losing um, Lyle Collins as well as Connor Williams. Uh, Williams. You know, so don't don't come at me and say, "Well, they lost all this." We lost our starting quarterback, Bobby. Not I mean, not seriously. They they they, they, they brought in <laughs> Allen Robinson. They there brought you go. In Bobby Wagner. They brought in people. We lost people that just figured it out with nobody. Right. But, right. But we went bar- bar- bargain basement shopping at Walmart. Okay. But but see and, and see here's here's what you know what's gonna happen. You know what's gonna happen if we go through and we go to Philadelphia and beat them, you know what they're gonna say. Well, the Eagles, you know, they hadn't actually oh, played anybody. They're gonna be yeah. over you know, they they were overrated. You know, we, we oh, knew no, Jalen no, Hurts no, wasn't that no, good no, and everything else. What, what you, you know that that's what it's going to be. Listen, listen, listen. Listen, you know damn well. You know, well, it, it was just that, you know, it was an off night. And, you know, I just think we were due for a loss. Oh, you know, well, the Cowboys, they're really good. Get the fuck out of here. You know what's going to happen. <laughs> like, listen, they're yeah. going to be on their bullshit. 
Yeah, we needed this loss to to get focused for the rest of the season. There you go. Yeah, we didn't want to get complacent. We've seen the Eagles. We, look, I've I've lived this movie they're living right right now, right? We know that half of their fan base on the low. They don't want to talk about it. Don't even like their quarterback. Mm-hmm. I would love to be the person to light that fuse because after we beat them on Sunday. They're going to wake up on Monday with people saying, I knew Jalen Hurts wasn't quite the quarterback. Mm-hmm. We're going to be the reason that it starts. <laughs> well, of course, it depends on how we win, but if it's the same stuff we've been doing and that is an exact oh, thing that happened. Yo, I, I, listen, all I'm asking, it, listen, and I'm not sure if anyone else is going to say this, uh, you know, but I'm just asking for the same energy. I don't want to hear all the bullshit I've been hearing from people. Um, it's been for 14 weeks straight. Listen, days. listen, like, fam, 14 weeks straight. listen. I don't give a I don't give a damn about the Eagles until we play them because listen exactly. I, if you know mm-hmm. me listen if you know me I'm a young I'm young I'm 24 I could give a damn less about what the hell we've done of recent mm-hmm. because oh other than that Super Bowl honestly we just it's a regular okay here we go we're gonna go to the link and beat you but that's just what I've been seeing over the past decade but I don't want to hear this shit about. Um, like if you guys went awesome, congratulations. But if we beat you, I don't want to hear shit about like, oh, well, you know, it's just, no, because I've been hearing all this shit about how Diggs is trash, this, that, and a third. Mm -hmm. Get the fuck out of here. I'm done with the shit. Seriously. That big play slay is better than Diggs. You know, Zeke Elliott is washed out. You know, (laughs) the only player you have is Dak Prescott. We've got the best offensive line in football. You know, Jalen Hurts is, you know, one of the premier quarterbacks. Our defensive front, you can't run on. These are all things that I've been hearing for the last 15 months. But now, now here's the thing I have as the motto for this year it's cockroaches. Because what happens is they come in when everything's good. They're talking. You know, it's like the cockroaches when you turn off the lights. They're out you know, all over the place. You turn on the lights, they scatter. And see, I had giant cockroaches, and I had Washington cockroaches all off season. I haven't seen those cockroaches in a while. I still got a lot of those uh, giant ones, I mean, eagle ones. But guaranteed, they won't show up after they lose. You're right. Did I just say after they lose again? Oh shit! I'm glad you brought up the word motto, Mark, because I feel like the Eagles always need a motto or mantra every single season. You know, um, if you remember um, back when they had Vince Young, it was the dream team. You know, yeah, the um, All Star team and, this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in 2017 or 2018, it was the, the the dogs or the underdogs. They had they had the hats, the, yeah. or, or like the, the little helmets, whatever it was. Yeah, the dog um, mask. They won the Super Bowl. Yeah, and, and this year is is the Batman. Mm-hmm. You know where the hell did that come from? Um, it, it, it's on. It's all over Twitter. You know, every, what the fuck it, am it, I hearing this Batman it, shit about? Philly five hundred started out as live stream with a Batman. I'm like, what the hell is? No, 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 no. <laughs> listen, I'm not even joking around. I'm being dead ass. I, I listen. This is the first time I've been here. I'm like, like I had players did a video on it. They, they, each of them is a different variation of Batman. What the I fuck kind of shit is this? Hey. And, and and I feel like they need that uh, that gimmick to keep them afloat. And 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 I'm gonna compare this to the Hot Boys thing that the oh, Cowboys man. had a few years. Or ago. or actually Jason Garrett mottos, you know, recommit, yeah, yeah, you know, or uh, finish and, the and fight and all that. You oh. see how like, hey, y'all heard that was to the success year? of the team. Mm-hmm. Y'all heard Zeke Motto this year. Pay the pay attention. You know, <laughs> keep keep you it all in house. What Zeke said earlier. He said, mm-hmm. "Effo, that one." Yeah, that's our motto. Today. <laughs> 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 that's yeah. our motto. Absolutely, absolutely, man. So that that is why I, I don't pay much attention to them because they are a gimmicky team. They they they're a gag character. If if any of you watch anime, they're a gag yes, character. They, they are, um, and, uh, uh, and I. And, I, I I appreciate Rome, you know, sticking so much to the Bane oh thing God. that is going on. Because we're, we're going to play their game at least for this week. You know, oh, great for that. Look, if, if, if I'm going to do anything, I know how to get under somebody's skin. Trust me. Thank you, sir, for Trust that. It's, it's, yeah. it's, 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 a real, it's an easy talent. Trust me. I, I'm but just I'm, getting started. We got a couple but, days left. Yo, I mean, on I, the on I, the I get ri- it. Oh, go ahead, go ahead, David. I'm sorry. I, say, I get it. You know, Batman, Batman's cool, right? I mean, I don't know. Like, he's probably the best of the DC comics. But when I think about it, though, Batman, there isn't a super man, there isn't a superhero that gets his ass whipped more than Batman. 
Batman won't from Philly. Why would they pick Batman? Batman always lose, the, and then he come the, up with some gadgets or some shit. The part oh, that kind of made me laugh was I go on Twitter and I see Rome with the Bane stuff. I'm like, okay, yeah. something's. Go- I'm like. What the hell is going on here? Yeah, like yeah, I saw that, that too. And I was and I was confused. I was like, "What the hell?" So then, I swear to God, if I go, if I watch some, the Sunday night broadcast and I see, start seeing fans wearing Batman, sh- listen, man, I will tell you, I understand that I have not seen the glory of the Cowboys. I understand that I have been alive to see an Eagles Super Bowl win, but not a Cowboys one. But I will tell you this: when I see the Cowboys stuff. I don't see gimmicky shit like that, and I and honestly, like I think it's cringy as hell. Not anymore. We used to do that. Finish the fights. We we'll finish Crap. the fight. Finish the fucking yeah. like that was a Jason Garrett bullshit. But like yeah. it's just. But no, on on some real stuff. Look, I get it. You're trying to find a way to get motive. I'm just waiting for the tweet where it says it's Dallas week or something like that. Because I'm like, Cowboys. No, <laughs> no. They, they already had a fan. They they the we won the Dallas flag. flag. Do mm-hmm. we have to remind them what happened to the last team that said that? They said it. Look, they, they said it, and before. Washington said it, and we yeah. both did. Must we remind yeah. you? But they it, 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 I, I just can't wait. Listen, all mm-hmm. I know is I am glad that we have a Sunday night football game where it actually means something this mm-hmm. go around. I'm happy for that, man. Like, listen, I just hated going into a like a primetime game with Philadelphia, and it's either okay, well. We're going to beat them or they beat us, but like, or we beat them and we already know what's going on. Like we're beating their third string. I I don't really care about that. But look, at the end of the day, I'm really excited about the matchup. I don't really care what the outcome is because guess what? Rome's mentioned it. I mentioned it. We're playing with house money. I'm not expecting, listen, I've been on a roll saying we're not going to win and we've always won. So that's great. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So I am under the firm belief. Look, congratulations. You guys are going to go out and win the game. Awesome. Congratulations. You guys are going to be 6 and 0 and cool. I we've been there done that. I've seen this. I've seen my team go out there. Uh they went 13 and 3. I don't really care anymore. All I care about is seeing results. I don't care what we do to win this. I don't give a shit if it's a 35 to nothing shutout. I just want to see this team con- con- consistently perform well, do the right things regardless of what if we lose and we did the right things i'm not going to complain is this me just doing some eh, no it, i'm just being real i think that that is what i'm looking for here well just being i'll real. tell you this i want to add on to that these fuckers better not lose to car uh to, to damn cooper rush <laughs> carson they better, oh, wow. to carson win. Yeah. they better not lose to cooper rush they better not lose to cooper rush if they lose to the Cooper Rush after 14 weeks of talking shit, mm-hmm. I, I'm in their house, laugh of my life. Yeah, if Dude. you lose, they, they almost lost to Ben DiNucci in their house. If you lose to Cooper Rush, I don't want to hear nothing. Listen, I don't want to hear. I, I'm we got the I, best receiving core. We got the best line. I don't want to hear nothing. Not up. I'm gonna be so goddamn unbearable if we win on Sunday. Yeah, yeah me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> All right. I don't think it's an if. Yeah. I'm telling you right now. Yeah, I'm me telling you, I've, in the last two years, <clears throat> I've seen us play the Super Bowl champion Buccaneers. I've seen us. There's only one team that caught us slipping. San Francisco. Like caught us literally slipping, and it was Denver. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what was going on in Denver when we played Denver. Mm-hmm. But, like, I haven't seen this team get blown off the field in almost two years. Denver always do us like that, though, bro. Not always do. Them. Like, just be honest with yourself. Even the playoff game, we lost, but we didn't get blown off the field. Ain't like we got lost by thirty. I don't yeah. know what Philly think rolling in there, but that type of defense don't exist. This ain't twenty twenty. We don't get blown out no more. Yeah, we just don't. So I'm letting them know right now. I don't know what they thinking. <laughs> like they they really think that we sweet, and it's funny to me. I'm like, I re- in twenty twenty, I might have been a little nervous. That defense was shaky. Mm-hmm. Yo, when we when 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 the offense rolls on the field of the other team, I I'll go get something to drink. I'm not worried. <laughs> you know, that's yeah. when I go get some food. When my defense rolls on the field, like oh, all right, you know what I'm saying? Like them days is over. I don't care who they rolling out there. Yeah. We got one of them defenses, bro. It sounds funny, but I go get something to drink and go get some food. Like I, I be at Mark's house, I go get some food when the offense. Is on. <laughs> go get a glizzy. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy to me that they think that I'm really supposed to be nervous. Like I've seen, like you said, I've seen Cup, Chase, um, Evans, um, 
like all kinds of these great, amazing. Look, I ain't gonna lie, Washington got some receivers. Mm-hmm. If you want to keep it funky, I've seen. So I don't know. Look, AJ Brown's a little bit bigger than most receivers. Congratulations, but that that ain't about to be. Is he better? That's my point. Because uh, I mean, look, I ain't no. see, look, where was his two hundred yards last week? If he's so unstoppable, if he's the unstoppable force. What was his touchdown for three games? I can't even three? name the Arizona Cardinals cornerbacks because their defense is ranked thirty second. Mm-hmm. Damn. They got the, I'm telling you, they're going to wake up in the middle of the third quarter like, I don't know why they told me all week that this team was trash. they going to be like, <laughs> gonna be yes. like, why nobody told us they was this good? Like, and that's and, and that's a dynamic that I just don't understand. I'm and like, and I and I asked this question honestly, like not only here but uh, to Eagles fans too. Like, why is it that okay when we go out on a field and we either beat you or we don't, whatever? It's that oh well, we had all these pieces together that made it work. But when we lose, it's everything's overrated. It's like mm-hmm. the same thing where I kind of get upset with even sometimes the own fans here when they try to put the blame on certain people. You know who I'm referring to. It's like, okay, so you think this person sucks, this person sucks, this person sucks, so everybody sucks, but we're four and one. So, like, what, what's going on here? Like, what what are we doing here? You said I mean? Like, what? They have I, not played four quarters of football yet. Nope. You, they you alluded they, to it. They, they have not played four quarters of football. Quarters of football. Mm-hmm. They play one quarter of football. That's it. I'm telling you, I bet you one thing. i tell y'all one thing. I bet you the Rams knew that it was like, this is our get right game. Yep. Huh. And, they, and, and the second quarter, if you looked at their face, it was like, shit. And then they, this is how you're like, they, like, they, like, they start running trick plays. <laughs> they start mm-hmm. running trick plays. They knew to, I knew they was on the ropes. When I saw Cooper Cup throwing a pass, I said, oh, y'all on the ropes. Y'all don't know what to do no more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, definitely, man. So, I'm actually going to close this out because we can go all night talking about the Eagles, man. Uh, I'll probably do another show at some point this week, man. Uh, I'll let you guys know about it. But I appreciate there you go. guys for stopping by on the Tuesday. My it's wife just got – No, that's all good. You no came problem. in right on time when we started talking Eagles, bro. <laughs> you well, came right in at the right time, man. I appreciate everybody for stopping by, man. Uh, you know, everybody – let everybody know where they can find you. For the most part, everybody knows that anyway. But we'll start with Mark. Uh, Joe Boo Sports Report, Mark Holmes. Tomorrow night, though, I got Philly 500 live stream. Oh, I'm, oh I'm, in, I'm in there. Oh, I'm in there. Yeah, so I, I, I've I'm got to there. find out what time, but I think probably 8 or 9 tomorrow night. No, that's Thursday. Tomorrow's Mark Wednesday. Mark Holmes is y'all crazy. Hey, bro, you know, what you got lined again. up this week? What you got lined up this week? I know, I know, um, I know you got to have something lined up. No, actually, tomorrow we're going against the, the, the biggest of the trolls. It's me and Jay Tuck and um, Big Game James versus Laura Brunson. Um, oh, y'all going to sweep them up again? Oh, hey, yeah, you're trying to get their ass whooped. Fam, I couldn't do any of that shit. shit. <laughs> and it's, hey, look, look, it is, look, I already, I, I see their little narrative they rolling out. They, they run in with this that we ain't played nobody because they going off of wholesale stats. But you know me. I know how to get them to my skin. It's real simple. I threw that running back one thing out there yet, and they and, <laughs> and they, they bit been me for hours. <laughs> I said, and all I said was, look, I respect y'all running back number one. Why are they so mad at me? They can just say, yo, appreciate the love for Miles Sanders, but everybody, if, if I say I respect your running back one, and the first thing you think of is Jalen Hurts. That's, a That's your problem. That's a, That's a you problem. I ain't say his name. You Damn. But anyway, if you want to find me on um, Twitter, Cowboys underscore Fan Talk, I'll be waking up bright and early, talking trash for twelve hours <laughs> until I get bored. <laughs> Damn. Space, what you got lined up this week, man? Um. Well. I'm just going to go uh, like Dragon Ball Z style. I'm just going to go in that little containment and just going to keep myself quiet until game day and let the pads do the talking. Just going to talk about a couple other things because you know what? You know what? I see all these Eagles content creators talking crap. I know that they're going to say like I, Mr. Uh, Hassan Reddick is better than Michael Parsons. <laughs> bitch ass. Shut the fuck up. Anyways, um, I, I look, I, I don't care. They can go on and talk and talk and talk. You can follow me over at Space Cowboy Media on YouTube. Do your due diligence. Subscribe to all these people here. Uh, and that's something that I think we could take pride on is that we keep it honest here. You know, we're not afraid. 
to delve into what exactly is going to happen down here. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's important here, you know, because I'm not going to just say, I can't speak for you guys, but for me, I can't say shit for the sake of saying shit. Like if I think that's all, I think they got a good team, but I'm not going to go out there on Twitter and just pick and choose clips and um, try to make a narrative out of nothing just so I can get clicks and views. I'm sorry, not sorry. I know some people that do that, but anyways, um, look, <laughs> Brunson, um, anyways. Um, <laughs> Brunson, was that a Freudian uh, slip thing? <laughs> uh, listen, guys, it's all good fun, though. You know what? I hope we have a great Sunday. I swear to God, if it's anything like Thursday Night Football, I'm going to be mad because I'm like, I've been. this is probably going to be game of the year right here. So, guys, uh, it was great kicking it with you guys. So, yeah, again, you can follow me at Space Cowboy Media on Twitter and on YouTube. All right. And, Brandon, last but not – certainly not the least. What can people All find right. you? Um, well, if you don't know me, I am Brandon. I am one half of Frankly Football. My other my other guy, um, my Robin, is Set It Off Chris. Um, together we make up Frankly Football. You can find us on YouTube at that, of course, um, on Twitter um, and Facebook at Frankly Football. Uh, the Twitter handle is at uh, Frankly Football, but the last L is a one. Um, you know, go ahead and like, subscribe, uh, follow all of those things. Um, you know, we believe that coaching matters. That's the main thing. Amen. All right, man. Appreciate everybody. Everybody in the chat. Make sure you uh, if you haven't done it already, make sure you hit that like button. Uh, thank everybody for stopping by. I'll be setting up something later on this week. Uh, hopefully, I can get my cousin Charlie on here because he had a lot to say when he got on my channel the last time. <laughs> so, hopefully, it's Eagles week and he'll get on here. So, appreciate everybody. Thank you, and we out.